What's going on guys? Today we're gonna to figure out how to find the sweet spot for your Amazon FBA product. So we all know product research is the most important part of the whole Amazon FBA journey. So if we don't find that product in the sweet spot, we could be at our investment, our time. It could just make our future in Amazon FBA not work for us. So jumping into my computer, I'm gonna show you exactly what I look for for product in the sweet spot. That way you can get up and running as quick as possible. Make sure you subscribe down below. Make sure you stay up to date on everything Amazon FBA related. Otherwise guys, let's hop on the screen and get to it. We can see we're on Helium 10. Uh, if you guys need Helium 10, it's the product research software that I'm using currently. Jungle Scout, Vara Launch, whatever you're using is probably fine. You can just copy what I'm doing there, use it on your other software. But if you wanna use Helium 10, follow along one for one. Or if you just need a software in general, there'll be a discount code down below that way you guys save some money before you hop on a product research app. So on Helium 10, I went to tools, then I went to black box here, and this is where we're gonna start. So I wanna talk about the criteria, right? So the sweet spot is where we wanna be at, that ideal point to find a product that gives us the best chance to succeed. So as we know, black box will give us different categories to browse through Amazon, all the way to sales price, everything like that. If you're not familiar with Helium 10, we can actually browse through all the categories of Amazon, numbers of sellers, sales price, price change, monthly revenue, all this stuff that can help us sort through the millions of products on Amazon. So this is where we're gonna start as far as criteria when it comes to finding that product. So first, let's go through categories here. So appliances, let's leave those alone. Again, electronics, appliances can have a lot of defect rates, could kill us with returns, return costs, everything like that. I'm okay with arts, crafts, sewing, automotive, I stay away from. Baby products can be a little sketchy, a little iffy. You can need some third-party certification, but I like to do this because there's a lot of opportunity there. Beauty and personal care, I click this on and off depending on how I'm feeling that day. It's definitely a bigger and competitive niche. Let's leave it off today. Books I leave off, camera and photo off, CDs vinyl off, cell phone accessories off, clothing, shoes, jewelry, a lot of returns off, collectible coins, no. Uh, computer and accessories, no. Electronics, no. Same thing, defect rates. Grocery and gourmet food, no. Handmade products, not enough demand usually. Health and household could be okay. It goes back and forth with me there. Home and kitchen, yes. Industrial scientific, yes. Kitchen and dining, yes. Movies and TV, no. Musical instruments, no. Office products, yes. Patio, lawn and garden. Pet supplies, software, no. Sports and outdoors, I go back and forth, but usually no. Tools and home improvement, okay there. Toys and game, usually depends on my mood, but we find a lot of trendy things here. Depends on what kind of product you wanna put through. Just a different ball game in general, so I usually leave that one off. Video games, no. Now, these are just suggestions, guys. Like, this is what I'm looking for for an ideal product in the sweet spot, right? Ideally, these are the categories I'd want to be in. This does not mean there's not more opportunities out there in different categories or that you don't have unique knowledge in one of these other categories that could give you a competitive advantage versus other competitors on Amazon. So please keep that in mind as you go through this. This is not a one all fit all, but ideally this is what we're looking for, right? So if we know what the ideal product looks like, ideal categories look like, then we at least have something to go off of if we're lost, if we're confused, if we're stuck, if we're just starting out. Next we have competitors. So numbers of sellers here, we can leave this alone. If we wanna avoid you know, retail arbitrage products, wholesale products, we can put a max on this, but usually not a big deal for me to leave alone, but just know we can play with that as far as keeping wholesale retail arbitrage listings off because we're looking for private label products where there's only gonna be one or two sellers on that versus 40 sellers with you know Charmin toilet paper or someone reselling lotion or a DVD or a book you know, from a Goodwill or you know TJ Maxx, things like that. Next we have sales, so price we went between 14 and let's say $51. So where I like to be at is between 15 and 50. I'm just kind of a weirdo. I like to put 14 and 51 to give me an extra kind of wiggle room a dollar each way. We want to keep 14 as our lower price because the lower the price gets, we still have fixed fees with Amazon, the FBA fees, and those eat into the bigger margin of a smaller price. So we want to keep this higher to make sure our margins stay healthy. 51 is just a recommendation here again ideally right because if we have a 50 60 70 80 dollar product it might cost us 20 30 40 dollars a product with the order a thousand of those it could be 30 40 thousand dollars right there obviously a thousand moq could be 500 could be 200 but ideally right if we want to keep this in our ballpark we would like products we don't have to invest a lot in right our whole savings and our whole wad you know 10 15 20 thousand on one single order right from the get-go because there's a lot more risk involved there okay price change i like to leave alone but something we can mess with if we get more advanced okay review count minimum you know put 10 here max let's put 450 here 
10 reviews on minimum just so we can keep those you know, brand new products, those trendy products, whatever it may be, kind of out of that search. 450 max because if we have 450 reviews with the main competitor in this niche, I'm okay with competing with that person. Where if they have 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, ideally, I'd wanna avoid that because that's gonna be a lot more work, a lot more investment, a lot more time to start competing with that person. As we know, reviews are the currency on Amazon, so we don't want to be too behind the eight ball when we first start out, unless we have a lot more skill set, a lot more inventory, a lot more financial ammo. So there's more aggressive pieces of the pie. I would just leave those for more experienced people or get more experience first before you do that. So review rating here, let's keep minimum alone and then we'll put max at 4.2. Why we do this? Because ideally, we want that person to have lower reviews, our future competition to have lower review ratings. That way we can improve the product and get that edge when it comes to review ratings versus them. They have 4.2, that means they only have four stars out of five on the visible listing itself. If we get to 4.3 and above, we have four and a half. So this looks like a big gap when it comes to competition. We have a whole half star more. I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but it actually is if you can get that review gap. So ideally, if we find a product that we can improve upon, take advantage of that, get that extra half star or that extra full star, whatever it may be, that gives us quite the competitive advantage. Next, we have exact brand search. Don't need to mess with this because we're not going after certain brands. You can see down here, exclude brands, exclude seller. If there's a lot of search results that are popping up annoying you, you can add this, but usually not an issue for me. Next, we have monthly revenue. So 4,000 to let's say 12,000 here. I'd say this is the sweet spot. Now your first reaction might be, Cameron, 4,000 the lowest? I don't want a product that only does 4,000 in revenue per month. I'd rather have someone 10, 12,000 on the upper end here. So why do you even put the 4,000 on the bottom? Well, think of it this way. If you get in earlier with a product that is trending up and it only has $4,000 of revenue, well, that's gonna be a lot easier of competition of a market to go into and start to dominate earlier. Just like a stock, you ask people, how'd you get into Google, Nvidia, Apple in the 80s, 90s when it was worth nothing? How'd you know that? The cool thing, unlike stocks and guessing if Google's gonna blow up from the 80s to you know 2010, which I don't think Google was invented till like 2001. <laughs> so it tells you how little I actually know. But the Amazon side things, I do know, and that's it. We can see trends over time. Not only do we feel trends out there, if we're out there in the public feeling things out, but we can actually look at data to see if things are blowing up. If we're in a market that does $4,000 a month in revenue, but it's trending up, let's say on Google Trends, which is a great tool, easy tool to use, and year after year growth looks good, we can assume that 4,000 is gonna turn into 5,000, 6,000, 7,000, 8,000, 10,000, 20,000. So it's like getting early in with a stock where we invest early, we take a little bit of a risk, but long-term, if we looked at the data, right? When I say risk, we looked at the data to make sure we weren't just guessing, but we were making an educated guess. And our hypothesis says that year after year, this trend will grow. Well, we only needed resources for a $4,000 a month product to rank to number one. And then we got to ride the wave up to 8,000, 12,000, 20,000 a month. So those are some of my favorite products because you don't have to put a ton in the beginning, but the reward pays off later. And if we just look right here, so we have two terms, CBD oil, pickleball here. So we see CBD oil, great. Say you got in right here, 10, 13, 14%. Let's zoom in just a little bit so you guys can see that okay. 10, 13%, 2016, then it really blew up. Great, so say you invested right here. So if we looked into this graph here, we would see this spiking up you know, year after year. And we got in here early, boom, it blew up. Now it did come back down. So we wanna avoid trend lines like this. So if we're seeing this year after year come down, we wanna avoid areas like this, right? The blue line again being CBD oil. Now the red line is pickleball. Okay, so now we see, look at this thing. You know, it's just kind of now breaking out. Yes, it'd be great to get in right here, but it's still kind of breaking out right here. So this is what you want to see. Hopefully you're down here while you do this and it's coming up here. So, you know, if we see year after year, it, it's kind of spiking up here. We know that it's going to continue to trend up. Now one tidbit here is I'm in worldwide. You can go to United States, depending on what market you're selling to kind of see what's going on. So I put United States here and we'll probably see similar things. Yep, very similar as far as CBD oil and pickleball. So that's what I mean. If we get an early with a product here that's kind of trending up, we could really take advantage in the long run. Obviously, if we find a really good product at 12,000 a year, fantastic, right? I just wanted to cover the back end why we kind of have that flexibility to go down. Sales change percentage, I'll leave alone. There's some more advanced stuff you can do with that one, but we'll leave that for another lesson. Next, we have shipping size. So very important here. So we have small standard size, large standard size, small oversized, and it goes all the way to special oversized. So small standard size, large standard size, small oversized are ideally where we wanna go into. 
Now, when we get to large, oversized, special, oversized, we're talking pools, we're talking washing machines. You know, medium, I guess, could be a really long broom or something like that, something that's really kind of crazy. You know, a small ladder, right? And now I'm getting into the weeds here. These all have dimensions and sizes that put them into certain categories here. But small standard size, large standard size, small oversized, you're usually gonna be in that realm where your FBA fees aren't gonna be crazy killer. You also won't be in that category when you're sea shipping from China or India, wherever you're buying these products from, your freight cost isn't gonna be through the roof as well. So ideally, this is kind of the sweet spot of where we wanna be first looking for products. Weight, I don't mess with here because if I stay within these, these are fine. If you do specialize in oversized stuff, that's where weight kind of really comes into. Fulfillment here, I like all three. So Amazon FBA, FBM, Amazon meaning that Amazon's buying this, selling this themselves. FBA meaning private label seller like me, who's shipping into Amazon and doing fulfillment by Amazon. So they're taking care of all the shipping, packing, everything like that. FBM means that I'm saying this from home or my personal warehouse. I don't really care where this comes from. I look at all competition the same. If there's an opportunity, there's an opportunity. And if it's a product that's an FBM that I could put an FBA, there's an advantage there. So there could be some advantages we can take care of there. Next, we have exclude brands, exclude sellers. We already covered that a little bit. Monthly sales and units, I don't mess with because I don't care. Our price point and our monthly revenue will fix this right here. So this doesn't really matter. So I don't touch this. Next best sales month. I don't touch this unless I'm going seasonal. And ideally we don't want a seasonal product. Covering sales to review ratio. I don't mess with this. Again, a little bit more advanced. Something we can cover later. Number of images. I don't really care about this either. Yes, it does take consideration of people doing a good job of listings, but again, don't really care. Now variation count, I do care about in the beginning. I want a max of three here because we don't want to see categories and products that have 12, 15 variations because that's a lot of money. Every variation has a minimum MOQ, minimum order quantity. So if we have 10, 12 variations, we need to start just to compete, you know, whether that's extra small, small, medium, large, extra large. Then we have colors, blue, green, pink, yellow. If we need all that to compete, well, that's a massive order because most companies won't make a small pink without making at least 500 of them and every other variation too. So your first order quickly becomes, you know, 10, 15, 20,000 with a ton of units. That's too risky. It's not ideal because you mean creative here, come up with a new designs, come up with something that's better. Maybe it's a tiger design, but it looks like crap. So you can make a better tiger design, or maybe they're missing the elephant design, the dinosaur design, whatever it may be. So I don't mind having variations. I just don't want too many of them when we first start. Title keywords, exclude title keywords, not really big into listing age, same thing. Something a little bit more advanced that I don't need to see at this point. Now we're gonna hit search down here. Now we can start going through one by one here all these products and no just because i put on helium 10 the perfect criteria does not mean we'll find perfect products on amazon this will take a lot of back and forth this usually takes me 30 to 45 days to find my next product this is something that takes practice a lot of reps going through looking through products figuring out how can we make these better how can we take advantage of something in the market how can we add value how can we look different even that really matters in amazon because we don't want to look like everybody else and obviously making sure the customer actually wants your product, which is kind of the biggest thing out there. So your journey starts here, obviously with Helium 10, you'll have the Chrome extension, be able to bring up sales, all the data in every marketplace, just like that over time here. We can also go to keywords here. So if we wanna see more products like this, buffing polishing wheel kit, we can copy this, search this on Amazon, search that, bring up our Helium 10 Chrome extension, and boom, we can see all the data here, you know, 32,000 a month, 17,000 a month, 746 reviews, 3,500 reviews. So it looks a little competitive there. Lots of sponsored listings to go through, which we can kind of filter, toggle on and off here. So your journey really only starts there in product research when it comes to finding product in the sweet spot, but hopefully that gives you some an ideal kind of place to start, right? If you're feeling stuck, if you're feeling lost, this takes reps. So this is kind of where you should be starting and taking action and it'll just get easier over time, right? We learn from action, not just by watching. We need to take action to actually learn, engrave these things and get better, iterate, everything like that. Now, if you wanna go deeper on product research, I have so many videos here, I'll pop some up on the screen. We can keep going down that rabbit hole, learning more of what the next steps look like. Of course, guys, if you guys need a Helium 10, might as well get it with a discount code down below. I believe right now you'll at least be saving 25% a month. So that's pretty great. Otherwise, guys, hope you liked it. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.